So when I talk, so today I'm going to talk about systematic discovery of human member uh, interactions. So I'm not a research scientist in, in America, and uh, so our lab is doing uh, machine learning and it's a uh, software company. And this work, this paper, is a paper I finished during my PhD study, and uh, it's a uh, Carnegie Mellon University and University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. Okay, so we know that protein-protein interaction are very important in um, mental systems, and uh, the uh, the if we represent a node and the edges represent the interaction between proteins, then we which is the called a protein interaction network. This graph. This is critical for the comprehensive understanding of the cell. So, uh, organisms and most of the edges on this graph are still missing. To decipher the edges, the missing edges, and, uh, unlike most of previous work, uh, who focused on the general human protein protein interactions, in this paper we focus on a family called human membrane receptors. So, why we focus on this family? of proteins because human, human membrane receptors are uh, attractive drug targets. They, um, they, they, they uh, help the communication between the cell and the environment. And they uh, have two types. The first type is called type 1 receptor. So that this, the, uh, this type 1 receptor, they are uh, related to the activation of enzymatic activities. And the second type is called GPCR, this uh, large family of G protein coupled receptor family uh, of proteins. And they are, so the, they are uh, initializing the signaling, mag signaling transduction mechanisms uh, in the cell and to, and also, uh, to understand the signaling transduction cascades, we have to, um, to identify those, in, in, those partner partners to human membrane receptors. And this identification may be give us help in understanding the complex disease. So uh, essentially, we focus on a subgraph of the, hu the general human membrane receptor, uh, human, human uh, protein interaction graph, this subgraph. So uh, the, in this paper, we use a approach to combine the computational prediction and to combine the computational prediction and also uh, the global analysis, and also experimental validation in a multiple level approach. Uh, in step one and two is a computational prediction of these missing edges. And step three is a global analysis of the patterns of this. And four is our ultimate goal is to make hypotheses for biological experiments. So is, we give uh, several test cases. How did we chose hypothesis and how did we validate hypothesis? So uh, the first step is uh, just uh, the whole motivation of the first step. Is we use features. We use all these uh, available feature evidence, information evidence as feature variables to represent each to human pairs, we can use the direct is to hybrids of maybe mass spectrometry interaction data as uh, feature variables, and we can use correlation uh, um, is of their gene expression values of the two partners. We can use the potential interaction uh, patterns of their domain structure, so so on and so forth. Essentially, we use these implicit data or or direct data as evidence as feature variables, not as proof. So uh, here we have, e for each receptor to human pair, we represent each of them as an m-dimensional feature vector, like feature 1, feature 2, major T, feature m. So if m equals 2, uh, we, have, we represent all the potential pairs as examples in this space. Our ultimate goal is just to classify, to color all those examples into two different colors, red or blue, and we want to learn the fact functions to map a feature vector into one of the two classes. Of course, the two classes in our problem means interact or not interact, and those feature variables uh, 
just from all different uh, evidence sources, the, because the uh, original source are heterogeneous to each other, the some uh, category, uh, categorical features, some uh, discrete features, they have different range of values. Some of them are missing and many of them have uh, no, are noisy features. And to this point, in a supervised setting, we need a, a set of label, labels of uh, interact pairs and not interact pairs. We use HPRD as this small set of positive data. And we don't have, we have no negative set available because there's no large uh, database provided this corporate. And also there's a really high skew class distribution between these non-negative pairs compared to negative, uh, to, uh, there's a highly skewed distribution between this uh, not interacting pairs and to the interacting pair class. So we use a very classic uh, called the random forest classifier. It's just a, connect, a collection of independent decision trees. And for each tree, they are learned on a bootstrap sample of the training set. It, this is a schematic uh, just figure of the random forest. So we have our feature, well, reference set, it has M dimensional features. We did a feature a bootstrap sample for each into M into multiple like bootstraps, uh, bootstrap samples like this green square shows. On each of the samples, we learn a decision tree. And then for a test example each pair, we have decisions from each of the trees. And then the final decision is a majority, majority vote from all these trees. Uh, yeah, so the advantages of this classifier is it could handle heterogeneous features. It's not, uh, it's not affected, affected by noisy features or correlated features. It has a strategy to estimate these values too. And these are our, um, very typical Strategies. So here, uh, we in our experimental uh, comparison, we did uh, several comparison of the choices of the features, choices of the classifier, choices of the reference set, uh, and also, also try the analogous based uh, label set uh, considerations. You can refer the paper for the details. Here, I list only two sub -fi two figures. These are precision versus recall curves, and uh, we. Uh, the, the more to the left upper is not better, uh, the more the better. So we compare the three cl different uh, classic classifiers and arrange uh, on this all the range. In general, this uh, random forest uh, so from slightly better compared to other classifiers. And uh, in the right panel is the comparison of is the reason the choices of our uh, of our reference set or the reference of the reason of our task? So actually, we train the model specific to this receptor subgraph, not necessary. So and so we can just train a general model to train to predict all the potential human protein protein pairs, and then we extract those subgraphs related to the receptor. Uh, human member receptors. And the other way is we train a model specifically trained on the receptor, on the receptor, uh, this receptor sub subgraph, on those non edges of the receptor subgraphs. Yeah, so these, uh, it got slightly better performance if we concentrate on this subgraph. And also, uh, the third thing I want to emphasize is. There are many different ways to get features from a data corpus. And the way to encode the, your feature evidence into features is very important for this, um, for this framework. We, we have many, we tried different ways and in the end we decided to make a 27 features extracted from eight different data sources. And in this, there are several loops of biological feedbacks in how to build in this feature set in our uh, framework. And finally, we decide the choice features, choices of reference, and then model to predict, to predict specifically receptor to human. Uh, and we predict all the potential receptor human pairs, as or not, for those indirect pairs we visualize as this sub. This, and the different family of proteins are visualized as different colors. Receptor using blue color and GPC uh, using green color. GPCR family used the uh, blue color. The ligands use pink. All the rest use red. And we did we perform some degree dist 
description analysis, hub analysis, uh, graph module analysis, some family-based graphs. From this graph, we can see some kind of a uh, hub, hub part in this figure uh, is the GFFR. We extracted this subgraph to EGFR to as this subgraph. This yellow color is the EGFR. So somehow there is a dense pattern of the receptor to receptor interactions in our printed graph compared to its uh, correspondence like um, HPRD version. And this pattern is even uh, more obvious in this receptor to receptor subgraph. So we just extract the subgraph related to the receptor to receptors. Uh, we are not sure if this is an artifact of our prediction models or if this is a difference in the signaling. There is some difference exists in the signaling crosstalk mechanism um, in the real biology systems. And furthermore, we liken on um, back to this graph. We found some ligands and they give uh, some hypothesis. Uh, interesting targets uh, to make hypothesis. So we also make a comparison of the overlaps between our predictions and all other methods. Our predicted graph has around 9,000 uh, predicted edges and about 1,500 already in HPRD. And two uh, 2005 paper also uh, using probabilistic model to predict this general human protein-protein interactions uh, have uh, are about 257 uh, overlaps to uh, another paper in 2007 version, we have around 500 overlaps. So from string, we have 200 overlaps. And to a EGFR, actually there's a Nature 2006 paper specifically is experimental uh, data set for the human member receptors is for the four ERBB receptors. Uh, out of the 180 uh, interaction pairs, we have 50 of them um, like recovered in our predictions. We don't use this in our training set. So, um, sorry. So all this analysis is just computational analysis. Our ultimate uh, final goal is to make hypotheses from our predictions. So we provide several three test cases in uh, our experimental validation, how to uh, choose, hy choose hypotheses from the predictions and then validate in the lab experiments. So uh, we chose, first we chose the EGFR uh, receptor. Then from its top 200 predicted list, uh, there are three of them not as lab labeled as uh, as interact in HPRD, then we test them in in our in our lab. So the reason of these three is because we already have the setup of these three proteins. In our top 200 predicted list. The um, list validation is a pull down experiment between the EGFR and diamond two. Uh, so the G GFP tag diamond two are transient transfected in the course one cell, and we can from the from pull down as it results the interaction got validated um, between the EGFR uh, between this between the diamond two to the cytoplasmic domain EGFR, uh, and this functionality of this protein is the receptor internalization, and further we. Uh, use similar experiment to test, uh, to test the interaction between EGFR and HCK. So HCK has the functionality um, related to the IFDs. It binds and regulates the, uh, NAF, uh, the NAF during the HIV infection. It has some functionality, um, it has some uh, gases for functionality in the tr signal transduction, but this functional is not very well defined. So this put on as is similar as before, validate the interaction between the EGFR and HCK. And further, we check this interaction in the human uh, head and neck cancer cell. Uh, one is the UM22A and the other is uh, 1483. In both these two cells, 
uh, this interaction still like got validated. And further, in the third experiment, we tested if this interaction correlated with the EGFR activation or not. So from this experimental uh, result, so this interaction as, is not correlated to the EGF uh, activation. So further, we have this for, um, hypothesis of the functionality of this interaction. Maybe this HCK interaction um, contribute to tumor progression pathways. So we done, uh, we have done an uh, experiments. So for this uh, uh, for this heart and neck cancer cell, uh, it's transfected by the HCK sRNA. We we observe twenty percent decrease in the proliferation um, proliferation of the cell. Um, so, and, and further, we did another experiment, and we found no effect of this interaction to this uh, human, uh, to the head and cancer cell, uh, this invasive ability. So, it appears that this interaction is less important compared to other SRC uh, family kinases like CSR and CSRC. So, anyway, so this is just uh, to represent how did we uh, test. Uh, the interaction that make hypothesis for is the the functionality of the interaction. We also have done a uh, interaction uh, validation between the EGF, EGFR and uh, TGF beta one. It's the data paper. So in some case, validations, it's also a multiple step approach. So we have the predict graph. We we rank list all the pr uh, potential partners, and then we choose those ones easy to test or maybe interested to test by the pull down assay. And then also test the interaction in some cancer or disease cells. And then further we, uh, make hypothesis of the functionality of the interaction by the SRNA experiments. In, uh, so uh, in uh, finally, so just uh, how we, because our ultimate goal is our prediction is to help biologists to the hypothesis. So we put our predictions in a web, interactive web service, and you can just go to there and to retrieve, to input the re receptor of human proteins. It gives you a list of the predicted edges between the receptor and the human proteins. And I also put all the possible predictions to each receptor as separate graphs in my, my separate. So if you don't like to use the web service, you can just go to the web, uh, website and download um, the each receptor related to predictions, it's sorted already and it's in the Excel uh, spreadsheet format. It has everything, it has the HPRD label and the related features, gene, pre, uh, gene description, genetic disorder information for all the potential, all this predicted list. We also put uh, graphs, uh, predicted graphs, and also hubs proteins uh, in our supplement. And, web. and also the software used used to generate features, predict predictions, and order the predictions are also shared in our uh, in our supplementary web. So if if you uh, want to expand this similar framework to some other species, you can directly just modify the soft source code. So okay, to summarize, so I want to uh, thank the NIC, NSF to support my graduate study. I want to thank uh, the, my colleagues in CN, CNCMU System Biology Group and also my collaborators from UPIT School of Medicine. So that's all. Thank you. So we have time for questions. Yes, please. Hi. Yeah, I had uh, sort of two questions. Um, one is that in a lot of the features you mentioned, like gene ontology or protein sort of uh, structural information, um, one of the things is I guess a lot of times those tend to use these throughput studies, protein interactions, as sources themselves. Like, for example, in gene ontology, I'm wondering, uh, is there a problem with circularity there or how, how you might have dealt with that? Yes, yeah, and I, I completely agree with the circularity of the, all those different annotation database. So... Mm, because we use that feature not as labels. So what I could expect just I could uh, I, it's just labels, which means these features correlated, but not the circularity uh, not necessarily affect our predictions. Uh, do do agree? Because our labels so suppose that HTR 
labels are not from those data are not derived from those databases. And then our it just means our features are correlated, but uh, it's, there's no circularity between our labels and our features. Um, and the second, yeah. I was just wondering, um, what, how did you compile sort of the negative training labels? So yeah, this is a good question. So so for the negative labels, because uh, um, this interaction is a very rare event. So suppose that out of a thousand random pairs, there might be only one pair to be the true interaction. So if from this random pool of receptor hu human pairs, you just do a random sampling, which means at least more than 99% of your pairs of those examples are true negative examples. It's not a bad example. It's not a bad negative set. So that is how I did it. Yeah. Thank you. So a question over there. Yes, with the, with the, uh, with the uh, uh, random forest learning method, uh, you can look at which input variables contribute the most to the prediction accuracy by looking, you know, by, by, by perfecting the variables and then looking at how the accuracy uh, decreases on data that's not used in the bootstrap sample. That's like a standard method for random forest. Did you look at that to see which of the input features contribute the most to the prediction accuracy? Uh yeah, so, so uh, I, let me repeat the question is how, how, how to do the feature selection based on random phrase? Uh, well, not, not, not so much feature selection as just looking at which variables are contributing the most to the uh, final so, prediction accuracy. I mean, you could use it as well. But. Yeah, so in the random phrase, there's a Gini, uh, it's a Gini value, and it, it, support, it provides a way to uh, rank the features related to the predictions. But there's another paper actually argue this one has a bias. And um, we, I just directly use the Gini, this Gini value as the feature ranking. But I believe there's a BMC bioinformatics paper from 2007 or 2008. It gives a maybe an unbiased um, feature ranking uh, criterion from the random forest. Maybe you can check that paper. Yeah. But which 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 features were the most important then? Maybe I missed. I that. believe this is gene expression. One of the gene expression actually in our from our uh, in, in our predictions from our experiments. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank the you. question here. Uh, so the three that you chose to uh, check experimentally were those shown in the yeast two hybrid? I mean, uh, are those seen yeah, in the other yeast two hybrid, hybrid experiments? Yeah, yeast two hybrid. But the the input data that you used was somewhat yeast to hybrid, correct? I, I can hear very clearly. The sure. input data part of your feature set was came from yeast to hybrid experiments, correct? Oh, actually we don't use the direct data actually in our feature set. I just listed there as a possible feature set. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, and, and the three that you chose, were they unique to your uh, graph or were they also seen as overlaps in other graphs that, that have been published also? Oh, these three. Actually, like, uh, I, I cannot remember very clear, but it's, they are new. I, I believe uh, at least HCK is novel. Yeah. The, one of the is, is definitely novel. It's not predicted by others. Yeah. Any more questions? So I actually have a, a quick one. So you showed the data on EGFR, but yeah. what about the three other homologues? Oh, we your talk baby. About yes. So actually, we, we test like uh, in the training data, there might be a homologous if you don't split. They are your baby are homolog They are closely related to the EGFR, right? That is your question. Right. And, and then they are taken together with your EGFR interactions or, or, or not? Uh, you mean if... The for, for RB2, RB3, etc. interactions uh, that they undergo do title under EGFR? If they also interact with HCK or with some other, I see. Um, I I think I believe my advisor checked. Um, it. I can't remember very clear, but I think I we, we checked. But I can. It's it's all in our prediction website. It's okay. it's really easy to see if they interact with HCK or with other species or not. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's thank the speaker again. And um, uh, uh, now there's a break to